Okay, so we're still talking about our structure of networks and so forth, and now I want to say a little bit about dynamics and things like tie strength. So um, we've been looking pretty much at, at networks as static objects um, with zero one kinds of relationships. So I want to just mention that you know obviously in in looking at real data. Um, networks are going to be changing over time. There's going to be relationships which come and go. Um, relationships are going to be stronger or weaker. And so let's just say a few things about that. And in particular, we're still sort of in the part of our course which has to deal with background and fundamentals. And, um, you know, talking a little bit about the, the characteristics of networks and so forth. And uh, what I'll do here is, is just give you a couple of links. Um, these are links to uh, James Moody's um, website where he has some pictures, and in particular, these the first one that's highlighted uh, is pictures of this romance relationship that we uh, looked at in the high school data before. What's important about that is is it, it will show you these changing over time. So it's not as if all these relationships were uh, present at one point in time. Um, people were having relationships with different people at different points in time, and understanding the dynamics of this the frequency with which things happen and so forth. This is sort of an ongoing of, uh, area of research where there's increasingly rich data becoming available. People are struggling with ways to actually code it and take care of it because it has real consequences for things like contagion. So um, the frequency of, of interactions of individuals will have a, a, a important implications for flus, um, what kinds of travel patterns exist. Um, communication patterns. When we talk about diffusion of products and things like that, um, dynamics will play an important role. So I, I just want to sort of point that out at this point. I don't have much more to say about it yet. Um, we'll see a little bit more of it as, as we look at different examples in the course. Now the other thing that we have touched on briefly is the fact that ties aren't all zero one. It's not as if I have the same strength of friendship with all of my friends. Some of them I talk to on a very regular basis. Some I don't talk to very frequently. Some can be very strong emotionally even though they're less frequent and, and so forth. Um, and sort of a, a very important study of this and, and uh, one that sort of made clear the strength of weak ties was a study by Granovetter and uh, <clears throat> in the early 1970s. And what Granovetter did was um, interviewed a, a series of people and asked about how they found their jobs. And the interesting thing that Granovetter found was that um, out of the 54 people that he interviewed, uh, one-sixth or a little more than 16 percent had found their um, uh, had, had found their jobs through uh, s strong ties. And what does a strong tie mean? In Granovetter's definition, it was that they had at least two interactions per week. Um, in contrast, there were 50, roughly 56 percent of the people who had found their, their job through a contact with which whom they had a medium tie, at least one interaction per, per year, but not um, two interactions per week, so not a strong tie. And then weak ties still accounted for 27.6% um, of the uh, job contacts, and they were less than one interaction per year. And so what uh, Granovetter was pointing out was that even though these are very weak ties in the sense that you don't have much interaction with these individuals at all, they still accounted for uh, a, a fairly large, more than a quarter, of the information about jobs that people were getting in terms of, of how they uh, managed to find their, their jobs. Now, you know, this has led to a lot of follow-up research and so forth, and understanding weak ties and understanding when they're important and when they're not and, and how important they are is, uh, you know, is, is a, a, a large subject. Let me say a couple of things here. Um, one is if you begin to think about the number of people with whom you have strong ties and you interact with very regularly, it's you know, maybe dozens, uh, maybe even fewer. Um, if you think about the number of people that you've known in your life and that you could actually talk to if you saw them, um, that might be on the order of thousands, right? So you have many, many weak ties and only a few strong ties. And so um, even though weak ties are, are people that you might not see very frequently or interact with very frequently, it could also be that there's just many more of them. And so, so the, you know, we have to put these things in context. Um, but what one, one part of, of Granovetter's uh, uh, 
discussion was about the role of weak ties. And one point that he was making was that people with whom you have less frequent interaction or, or less strong interaction tend to be people that might connect you to another part of the network. And we already saw a little bit of this when we looked at our ad health data. Um, when we look at uh, you know, weak ties in the sense that people just had to name each other as friends, um, we saw some connectedness between uh, different groups. And then if we put in strong ties, those dis you know, the, the, the ties that tended to go across um, the different groups uh, had now disappeared largely. And so there's different patterns and so that more of the ties across the races tend to be ones that disappeared once we put in the stronger um, notion. And the idea is that you know, bridging, meaning connecting different components of a graph, um, uh, might be more frequently done by weak ties. So even though somebody is somebody you don't interact with much um, and you might have less in common with, they might connect you to a part of uh, the world that you don't normally have access to. And so they can still be very important in accessing information that might not be redundant with people that you often interact with. And so weak ties can still play a very important role. Okay, so what we've talked about um, is uh, a series of different ways of, of representing networks and, and characterizing them. We've talked a little teeny bit about dynamics and, and strength of ties. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is now beginning to zoom in on particular nodes and to, to sort of talk about what their position in a network is, which is also going to be important in understanding things like diffusion, contagion, and, and how people behave.